Hi, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about advanced queries with the Apollo client. So in the last section, we learned how to define a basic query. Here, we're going to look at different approaches we can take to make our queries more composable. Eventually, we'd like to finish by actually displaying the different Pokemon tiles on our little example project. So as usual, let's start by changing directories into the third exercise. Installing our dependencies. and running it to see what it looks like right now. Okay, again, nothing too exciting. Before we start, before we start writing some code, let's have a look at the idea of using a variable inside a query. So when we specified our query before, it looked something like this. We had this query, trainer query, which is the name of our query. And then on the trainer node or field, we specify the name Julian and we wanted the name. To see what this looks like, we can go ahead and run it in our GraphQL panel. We see that we got Julian back as the name of the trainer. This is great, but in some instances, we might wanna ask for somebody else's name as a trainer. So let's go ahead and rewrite this part of our code to make it more general. If we were to use a variable, we would define it like this. As the name of our previous query was trainer query, we can add some brackets and put the name variable inside. Note we have to specify the type of string. This just helps us later on in case we pass some arbitrary value in, which doesn't make sense for the query. Once we've defined it like this, however, we have to make sure that we pass in name as a parameter. The way that we do that is down here. When we bundle up our React app with this so-called higher order Apollo component that passes in the data it's fetched, we can add in an additional parameter of options which contains our variables, in this case, name Julian. So now it kind of makes sense how we can use variables along with our query. Let's go and do one more thing before we go ahead and implement this. Right now we're just getting the name of the trainer. Because we know that a trainer owns Pokemons, why don't we get the Pokemons as well? because after all, we do want to display that at the end. So let's have a look at how we could possibly do this. Right now, we ask for a trainer with a specific name and we only ask for the name attribute. But we could also ask for the own Pokemon attribute. Now each of these are going to be Pokemon items, so we can ask for the name, as well as the ID and also the URL. So let's see what this looks like. Great. So now we've just got the trainer, Julian, and the three Pokemon. This is basically all of the pre-filled data that we had at the beginning. If we refer back to the data browser, we can see that we have the corresponding three Pokemon in there. So this all looks great. Now, if this all works correctly, we should be able to use a new component that's been added to this exercise in order to display them. Let's have a look at the code now. So again, I've changed directory into exercise 3, let's open up source, components, and let's have a look at Pokemon card. So this component is what we get when we're trying to edit the Pokemon. If we look at Pokemon preview, we have this simple tile that has the image and the name. So now let's go back into Pokedex and edit this to include the new stuff that we just learned about queries. So again, I'm going to just copy and paste to speed things up. Let's replace trainer query to include the new own Pokemon section with the ID name and the URL. And let's go ahead and take this render method and replace our current render method with it. So we're doing the same thing here with the name, this.props.data.trainer.name, which would give me Julian in my case, in your case, hopefully your name. And here, instead of saying zero Pokemons, we say this.props.data.trainer.ownPokemons.length. And if we go ahead into our GraphQL panel and we execute this query, we can see that the result of the evaluation of this own Pokemons attribute is an array of objects, and each object corresponds to a Pokemon. We can see that we have three Pokemon over here, and we have three Pokemon, so it makes sense to say that the length is the length of this array. 
So there are, in this case, three Pokemons in your Pokedex. Finally, let's go ahead and map over that array, taking each Pokemon and passing that as a prop to the Pokemon preview component that we made earlier. We'll pass in the ID as the key for React and the Pokemon into the Pokemon prop. Finally, we had a look at this query already. We package it up, the query and the Pokedex, and we export that. So now let's have a look to see whether that all works. Ah, wait. I've actually forgotten one thing. So I'm just exporting Trainer Query and Pokedex now, but I actually need to make sure I add in the extra parameter for the name like we talked about earlier. So again, let's just go back into the tutorial, close this panel for now, copy Pokedex with data, and we'll replace this constant with a new one. And here we specify the variable name as Julian. Okay, now let's run it. So I'm going to run yarn start or npm start. And if we go ahead and open it up, we can see that we have our Pokemon loaded in correctly with my name and three, which is great. This is exactly what we were expecting. Now that it's all working, let's try clicking on one. When we click, nothing happens because we haven't implemented the new screen yet that enables us to zoom into each Pokemon and edit it. So as it's all working, let's go ahead and try that out now. Let's go back to our code editor. And if we have a look at index, we can see that the new route's already been added for us. View slash Pokemon ID. And this goes into the Pokemon page, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so we can see that we can access the Pokemon ID via the props. What we'll do later on is use this Pokemon ID to make a query and fetch the right Pokemon to render onto this page. But for now, we need to go back into Pokemon Preview and wrap up the image and the title with a link so that we can redirect to that page and render the Pokemon. So I'm going to go back to the tutorial, scroll right down, and just take this render method. Push this. First, we can see that we've imported link from React Router, which we're using down here. This simulates the A tag. And in the two box, we've done view slash this.props.pokemon.id. And we can get that from this Pokemon object that's hopefully passed in as props. But if we look at our index again, we can see that it matches the new route that's been created. So hopefully, when we go ahead and click this, we get redirected to this new route. And that new route renders the Pokemon page. So now that we're in Pokemon page, let's go ahead and add the query that's responsible for fetching the Pokemon we want to look at. So let's take this, paste this in, and replace the export default with the following code. The reason being that we already received the Pokemon ID through the props. So we're going to use this Pokemon ID that we have in the props in order to query for the Pokemon. The way we do that is we take this query and we pass it in as a variable, similar to the way that we did it with Julian last time in our last query. So we're using this ID, we fetch the Pokemon, and we hopefully render the Pokemon. So let's add that final bit of rendering in. We'll just copy the whole class in. And we should now be ready to try it out. So we can see in this render method, if it's loading, we display just loading. If it's an error, we deal with that. Otherwise, we go ahead and defer to Pokemon card, passing in the Pokemon and handle cancel, which is a little function that we defined down here where we just place router with a slash because we're only one level nested. So we can just replace it and go straight back to home. So let's go ahead and try running that now. Let's go ahead and open this up and nothing's going on. Let's have a quick look. Ah. Oh yeah. Let's try and remove one of these. We'll bump this one up one. And try one more time. And we can see that now it's working. If I click this, yes! We can see up here we have view, slash, and then followed by the ID. 
and the Pokemon is being loaded correctly, if I click cancel, our URL is replaced with a slash and we're back to this page and it works with all of them. Brilliant! So we've done quite a lot in this video, but just to recap briefly, we've learned about how we can use variables in our query to make our queries more composable, and how we can use the results of previous queries along with the router to create more composable parts of our application. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk more about fragments.